This is Craig with Karsholton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 4.2, Performing Conditional Operations. Let's get started. Conditional operations are a really important function for an experienced Excel user to be comfortable with. And I don't think that the textbook has done a very good job of uh, describing these in the, in the text and the examples aren't all that awesome either. So we're gonna spend a little bit of extra time with this particular section and go through it in a little bit more detail so that you're gonna be much more comfortable with this, both to prepare you for the exam, but more importantly, to make you a more skilled Excel user professionally uh, for the time after the exam. So let's take a look at this 4.2 workbook and there's only the one tab on it, the expense statement. Our first task is for us to go to C25 and review the formula. Now, I don't know about the downloads that you got, but mine actually has cells C25 through C28 are all full. Now, 25 and 26, we're just supposed to review, and then 27 and 28, we're supposed to actually enter formulas in. What I'm gonna suggest is you go to those four cells, so that's C25 through C28, uh, select them, hit your delete key, okay? What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go through and create all these. We're not gonna review them. Um, we're gonna create them so that we have a much better grasp of, of what we're doing here. So in C25, what we wanna do is use the end function. So the end function uh, will provide either a true or false result based upon the conditions that you give it. If all of the conditions that you give it are, are correct or accurate, it's gonna give you a true. If any of them, are, are not true, the whole thing comes back as false. So let's start off with hitting an equal sign. We're gonna type AND, and now we have AND here selected will, and it tells us here, checks whether all arguments are true and returns true if that's the case. So we'll hit tab, all right, and what they're telling us is that we wanna take a look at whether the entertainment is less than 200. So the entertainment is in cell H20. So we want H20 to be less than, so we'll use our less than key 100, excuse me, 200. All right. And the other thing we want to have happen is for the miscellaneous, which is I20 to be less than 100. So if both of those are true, uh, it will give us that result here. So we'll hit enter here. And so it tells us that, yes, this is true. Now, what I find is sometimes if you don't use conditionals very often, they can be a little bit confusing. One, one help that you can do is in the, up in the formula bar here, just to the left is this, for, this function or formula symbol. If you click on that, it brings up a little bit more uh, detailed description for you here. So it, basically, this is our first logical argument, and it actually tells us, it takes a look at that and says, okay, well, this is true. If I was to adjust this down to 100, excuse me, 100, it updates and lets me know that this would show as false. And if this one's false, our total argument is gonna be false down here as well. So we'll change that back to 200. All right, next we are gonna use the uh, or function. So I guess you could call these cousins. They, they work in similar ways, but they're gonna give you different results. So let's do our or here in C26. This is our next task here. And so what we wanna do is an or function, and we wanna determine whether the entertainment total is more than 200 or the missed total is more than 100. Okay, so this is very similar. So we're gonna go into H20 and we are going to say that we want it to be less, excuse me, more than, more than 200, and, or in this case, or I20 is greater than 100. So, or function, um, I guess you can think of it, uh, this will give you a true result if any of the things are positive. I guess you can think of a, a police officer on the highway, he's gonna pull you over um, if you speed, or if you um, follow too close, or if you forget to signal. So if any of these things are true, 
uh, he's going to pull you over. He's not going to wait till all of them are true, which is like our end function. So in this case, Excel tells us the result is false, and that says that none of them uh, has happened. So in this case, you've been a good driver. There's nothing you can get pulled over for. Next, we want to go into C27 and use the if function. So again, if functions, you're going to use these all the time. Uh, best to get comfortable with them. And, uh, and so with an if function, we'll type if equals if, our bracket. And so the first is the logical test. So what we're what Excel is doing is it's going to take a look at something, and if it's true, Excel is going to do one thing. Now if things change and it's no longer true, Excel is going to do something different. So in this case, uh, we want it to display some text if our C25 is equal to false. So we're going to type C25, or we could just highlight the cell if we want. So we want that to be if it equals false. So we've got an equals. We're going to type in false. Now false is a special function, so we don't have to put it in quotes here. We can just hit uh, tab now that it's highlighted. So the first thing is we are going to tell Excel what to do if indeed the result is false. And so if the result is false, we've been uh, instructed to say um, expenses are okay. Or excuse me, uh, if it evaluates to true, let's do it that way. We'll go to equals true. And if it's true, we want it to say expenses are okay. So quotation mark expenses are okay. Now, if it doesn't show as true, we want it to say expenses are too high. Now, now, frequently and in other coding languages, you'll think of an if. You'll have an if this is true, and then the result is an else, they'll say. So if it's true, do this. Otherwise, or else, do something different. So we'll hit enter here. So what it's doing is it's taking a look at the value here. Since this value is true, it says that expenses are okay. Next, we are going to do another if function. And this one, there's a, a key difference that we'll go through here. So we're going to put if again. This time, we want if C26 evaluates to not true. OK, so before we used an equal sign, in this case, we want to use a not equals. And so that's not a key on your keyboard. So we we create one by doing in less than and an greater than sign. So it's going to look like this. So this is this you can interpret those symbols as not equals. So if it's not equal to true, here's what we want it to say. Expenses are too high. Okay, and then they say if it's not false, we want it to say, or excuse me, expenses are okay if it's not true. I need to read these more closely. And the converse of that, the else is expenses are too high. We'll put our close bracket on there, hit enter. And so both of these are now saying expenses are okay. So this is this is important to notice because we don't always have to use equals, um, and and a lot of people assume that it has to be equals. We could uh, have our uh, conditional be greater than. We could have it be greater than or equals to. We could have it less than. We could have it less than or equals to. Or in this case, we have it not equals. Now there may be some others that I'm not thinking of, but those are going to be the most common ones that you're going to experience. Next, they want us to check the work. And, and to do that, they want us to increase our entertainment expense by 100. So we're going to go into cell H13. We're going to imagine that someone else has gone out. There's one more entertainment expense on this report, and it's $100. And as soon as they do that, all of a sudden it triggers these alerts. Uh, so it tells us, hey, expenses are too high. Uh, this has gone to false. This has gone to true. 
and whoever is reviewing these expenses is going to be alerted to that fact. So I hope that gives you a little bit of better idea of uh, our ands, our ors, as well as some if-then st statements. If this is still something that's a bit confusing to you, let me know in the comments. I don't mind uh, creating a new video that's gonna that I can kind of customize for you to help explain these further. But I, I think that should give you a good start. Um, make sure you give a thumbs up if you think it's been worthwhile. Subscribe. And uh, I look forward to seeing you with our uh, part two where we talk about counts, countifs, sums, and sumifs to give a little bit more meat to this chapter. Thanks for watching.